Hello and welcome to this edition of Able and On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this edition of Able and On Air, we go into the world of food, special needs, and birthright trips to Israel. Yes, Israel. So, with us to discuss this topic, um, he went to Israel, Emery, uh, from Orca Media. Thank you for joining us yeah, on absolutely. Able Then On Air. And tell us about the birthright trip to Israel and what you did, how you did it, and how people can do it after they watch this so program. So basically you have to apply uh, to get in, but... Uh, it's. I think you usually get in as long as you can uh, directly link a grandparent to being Jewish. Um, and it's basically for people ages 17 to 32 now uh, mm. to go basically on a free trip to Israel uh, if you're Jewish. And so I went with my older sister, uh, and uh, we were there for 10, 10 days. Mm -hmm. And um, there's lots of specialized trips that focus on, there's like a, food, a trip that specializes on the culinary stuff of Israel, mm -hmm. or uh, if they want to do more hiking or more stuff in the wilderness. But we went on like the general Israel trip, so we visited a lot of the more famous sites and uh, different places uh, all over the country. Now obviously, um, well, special needs or not, or, or challenged or not, uh, you went away far, right? Yeah. So there were certain, I should say, boundaries or certain things that you had to abide by, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, you know, you couldn't call people because it's seven hours ahead. Um, how did you deal with some of those situations, um, with the money, so on and so forth? Um, the the money was tricky because I uh, we they had an exchange person when we landed there, but my sister and I both missed it because we had some phone issues, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we ended up not really having a working phone for a lot of the trip, uh, which was uh, unfortunate. But I, we managed to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, we was, there wasn't really very reliable internet connections anywhere mm -hmm. uh, or anything like that. Uh, so we, I, I, when we were in the airport, I downloaded net, a lot of Netflix shows on my phone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the most part, by the end of each day, we didn't get back until like nine or nine thirty, or even ten, sometimes later each night. And mm. by then, we had been done so much that day uh, that I, I was pretty exhausted, anyways. So uh, it wasn't like uh, I needed to connect to anything really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the most part, Where you so you dealt with losing your luggage. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, how did that? Yeah, you know, because pros and cons to everything. How did you end up losing your luggage and mm. situation? Um, we're not sure. Yeah, most of the uh, I, a majority of the people on our trip lost their luggage mm -hmm. uh, for at least a few days. I was lucky and got mine back after only two Which, days. Which airline did they fly? Uh, we flew... From Boston. Uh, no, we flew from New York, mm -hmm. uh, in the New Jersey airport. I forget what the name of the airline we... Uh, El Al? Was. Yeah, it was uh, El Al. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. How uh, did you... Uh, how was the food? Because then uh, some of your pictures, you know, reflected yeah. of that. Well, the, the food on the airline was better than American airline food. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's for sure. The, for, bre for breakfast, because the flight is about 12 hours. Uh, I know, so yeah. for for breakfast, uh, you had an option of either like eggs, uh, and uh, or uh, or you could get like some crepe type things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that came with an like a nice cheese spread, because mm -hmm. um, yeah. everything was kosher. So you couldn't have like eggs with uh with no, no. With, uh, with the with the dairy or whatever. No, no, I know mm. that. I, um, I flew. <laughs> yeah, like for example, because um, you have to get yeah, up and move falafel your Falafel and oh, absolutely uh, other. Other pictures. Yeah, yeah, there was lots of great, uh, there was lots of great food in Israel, uh, and uh, I think the best example of uh, what when we went to uh, we went to the uh, the Holocaust Museum. Oh yeah, I've been uh, there. Yeah. In in what is it Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Yad Yad Vashem. Yeah. Yes. Been there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the food court there is divided in two. 
because you yeah. can either have your uh, you can either have meat with your food or you can have animal products like dairy and that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, but you can't have eat any of those. No, together. you can't mix it together. Uh, yeah. So it's it's basically segregated, which yeah, is yeah. which is really interesting. How on one whole half of the food court is all people who are eating meat, and then it's divided by a, one of those uh, like a fence basically. And everyone sort of else. like what happened in the Holocaust. You were divided by yeah. fences and ghettos and, you know, that type of thing. So yeah. it, was it, did they want to picture that um, as far as? I don't think so. I think it was more just they're, they're being extremely careful about being kosher, which every single place we went to in Israel was kosher. It was yeah. uh, just because it's so focused around the Jewish faith. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as um, yeah. <laughs> you you visited um, certain parts of Israel, yes. Jerusalem, um, Tel Aviv. Yeah, uh, Tel Aviv like now, me. explain about the Bedouin situation, the Bedouin people. Um, we yeah, we spent a night uh, with the Bedouin people, which are like a uh, they're like a uh, I believe they're Muslim and they uh, are a nomadic uh, group of people. That travel across the uh, the Israeli uh, desert, uh, and so they have big tents that they set up and they travel around, uh, and so we spent a night with them, uh, and it's it was more like a Bedouin like tourist hotel, uh, where you got to sleep in a tent and they made you food, uh, and there were camels, and that was pretty cool. Um, the, a hotel the, for be Bedouins? Oh, a hotel that the it was like a touristy hotel that the Bedouins ran. Oh. Uh, and since it's all based on tents and stuff, they could really set it up anywhere, which is cool. Okay. Um, and it it seems that the birthright trips uh, really latched onto that, mm, and that was a cool experience. Yeah, for, it, it says that the um, the Bedouins, well, was saying that because uh, well, the Bedouins came from is um, Arabic. It, um, yeah. They originally were nomadic people. Yes. So you dealt with being in a desert. You mm -hmm. dealt with being uh, in a tent. Probably no no running water, right? No, not really. Wait, oh, you had water. Um, well, yeah, they had it. They had like they had uh, like facilities on um, bathrooms and showers for their guests. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it was a much more like uh, m much more modernized. Uh, dwelling but everything was still intense mm -hmm. and based around that well um, so what are some advice is someone special needs or dealing with challenges because I know that airports now mm -hmm. when you board a flight anywhere doesn't necessarily have to be Israel well don't forget Israel is a 12-hour flight okay can in your opinion, do you, uh, I mean, I mean, with the proper preparation, can a person who's dealing with a special need take that long flight? So these are certain things that have to go into account. How did you deal with the long flight? Have you ever been on a long flight like that before? Um, no. Before this, the longest flight I'd been on was probably to California. Um, so I, I really hadn't uh, ever been on a flight that was longer than like three or four hours before. How did you end up dealing with the um, flight? You I had slept a, a lot, right? I had a lot of trouble sleeping, actually. Um, I'm not sure why, uh, but I slept for maybe like two or three hours mm. at the max, uh, just on and off, uh, and I just couldn't stay asleep for longer than an hour or so. Mm. Uh, so you don't was, like airplane food? How was the food? The food was fine. Uh, the food, it was better than American airplane food, like I said. Uh, it, um, I'm, I, I'm not sure why I, why I couldn't get to bed. Maybe it was just the constant motion or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I it just relaxed and uh, kept hydrated mm -hmm. and watched yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. movies they had. What, what, um, what advice can you give someone who wants to do this type of trip, um, you know, obviously you had to prepare yeah. ahead of time. You had to make uh, phone calls to the, uh, to the, <clears throat> to the, you know, so basically, so do you have to prove that you're Jewish in order to go to a trip like this? Um, yeah, there's always some people who slip through the cracks and say they're Jewish, but they're actually not. 
But um, for the most part, yeah, you have to you you just have to um, like pr show documentation that like your grandmother or your grandfather mm -hmm. or somebody related to you yeah, is Jewish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they when you get to the airport. They interview uh, LL Airlines yeah, is pretty crazy because they interview every single person one on one. I know. So yeah. I went through why it, yeah. why are you going? What's the well, reason? Yeah. And they want only fifty pounds in a suitcase. Yeah, fifty pounds max uh, yeah, in the suitcase. What, what were some of the questions that they asked? You? Um, they asked me uh, if I ever went to synagogue, uh, and how often, what the name of my rabbi was, uh, who else in my family goes to synagogue, uh, etc. Uh, they got kind of freaked out because um, I told them about the structure at Beth Jacob Synagogue. Uh, they were like, wow, you're definitely Reformed Jewish then. Mm. <laughs> uh, just because they have the rotate. They don't have one specific rabbi there. Mm -hmm. mm. They have a few. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, so they weren't going to let you on at first? or, or? Um, they, 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 they let me and my sister through fine. There was a few people. They stopped and like looked through their bags and that kind of thing, because uh, they're, yeah. they're just really they're really uh, paranoid about uh, people smuggling stuff in, and rightly so. Mm. Uh, there's a lot. The, the 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 culture and stuff that's not allowed in Israel is much different than America. Yeah, and they also have rules that a religious person can't sit next to a woman on on a, on on on, on an airplane. On an yeah. airplane, you know, going to Israel, they mm -hmm. have certain specific rules like what um so you went to some synagogues right yeah um is it <clears throat> since you were raised reform yeah was it a little difficult for you to to take in of some of the rules and regulations of israel like you know keeping your head covered or certain things that you had to deal with? Um, not really, because I, I had prepared for it, and I knew that like lots of places I was going to have to wear uh, wear some sort of head covering. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I brought this hat with me. But lots of the synagogues provided uh, free kippahs mm -hmm. uh, to, to wear while you were there, which was cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it was really, it's really just more about being polite uh, and just making sure you understand what the rules are. Uh, more than anything else. What are some of the things that, um, I mean, were you afraid of doing things there or like? Um, sometimes. We visited, um, what are they called? Uh, we, we went to, um, we, we went to the city, uh, Sfat. And, oh, yes, Sfat, and, very nice. And, it's uh, very artistic. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, there. yeah, it was a very beautiful city. Did you take it to that synagogue there? Uh, we, yeah, we went to a few synagogues oh, there. Oh, there's one synagogue, beautiful. They have, like, um, it has, like, all different kind of art. Mm-hmm. All different kind of things. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's beautiful. Um, and we went to, I forget what they're called, uh, but they're, like, the, uh, the, the water, uh, it's, like, the bathing thing. Uh, there. Oh, mikvah. Yeah, we the went mikvah, to the mikvah. Yeah, yeah. It's separate women, separate men. Yeah. Seven days. And so the, you, you went the, into a mikvah. We went. I how, went into. How, yeah. How, how did you feel? The, how did you like the experience of it? Well, it was kind of crazy because the the men and the women separated yeah. into different groups. So how did you? How did you? How did you? How did you, how, how did you like the experience? Well, we went to the world's oldest mikveh yeah. in Sfat. That's like over oh, 500 wow. years old. So how did and you like the it? The water runs off the mountain. And yeah, I was, it's like, I wasn't it's like gonna, rainwater, rainwater. So yeah. how did you like it? I wasn't going to go in at first, but I, 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 I was like, hey, I'm probably never going to be here again. Yeah, uh, you buy so, our experience. So, yeah, so, so I was you like... Went, I, how did you like the experience? It was cold, but it was really cool. It was very interesting. Uh, it was Israel, a lot of the stuff I did there, I was just, I, I, stuff I wouldn't normally do. Mm -hmm. Uh, but How did your sister like? Did she like the experience? Yeah, she didn't. She, the, the woman didn't get to go into any no. mikvahs because they didn't have time. It takes a lot wow. longer for a woman to prepare, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, than for men. So um, they went into the men. So the, what, did the, you see the any, woman stayed outside. I did guess. you see any celebrations in Israel? Because I know now um, Israel is celebrating, or they were uh, a couple of days ago was um, Israel's, Israel's 70th time. birthday. Yeah. Being in, their Independence Day. So, did you see any celebrations or? Um, we went to parades. We, we went. We went to. We didn't. We didn't see any like uh, official like celebrations or parades, but we went out on the town a few nights and we saw mm -hmm. some people at like a uh, at a concert where people were playing music, mm -hmm. uh, or some people uh, at a dance club and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any like talking about the food for a minute? 
any food that you didn't want to try? You were like, you know, because uh, I know it's, Israel food is really strange. Did, it take, to did some... it take you to Burger King and Juice? <laughs> <laughs> Burger King and McDonald's. They have did, did, kosher they, McDonald's. There's a kosher, yeah. The only kosher Burger King and Juice, and did they take you there? Uh, no, oh, we didn't. So we, we, we tried to stick to more like local stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they falafel. They took you to the best dishes. Good, good falafel. There. I don't know. Most of the stuff there was pretty good. I don't think there was anything that I was too... Well, I guess the gefilte fish. Uh, Ew, yeah, good. that that's a little strange for it's anyone, um, disability or not. It's good. To, to, <laughs> I shit. love gefilte fish. That's special. Yeah, well, I had fact. some at Passover a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and too, it, yeah. Was, uh, it was better because my grandmother made it. Whereas this gefilte fish was off of a... Uh, a hotel. Uh, most of the food we ate, our breakfasts and went, and dinners, were at the uh, were were hotel catered. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like the best uh, Israeli food, but it was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lunches well, we ate out. well, I mean, they. I mean, we don't have a jar here, but yeah. um, gefilte fish is actually uh, it's a Jewish dish made from poached and and ground uh, deboned fish. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's basically. My, my aunt used to do it on Gumi. Yeah, time. but I mean the jar stuff has the jelly and yeah. the, but some they have one now you can you put you could boil with carrots with a, you put it you leave it in the wrapper and you put it in a pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just boil did you have it. traditional matzo ball soup? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. on a on on a on Shabbat. Mm. Yeah, cuz the way some people make it, you know. Yeah. Make it Go to Israel to get real Jewish food. <laughs> um, I think the worst or weirdest thing I ate there was uh, they had kosher sushi at like this nice hotel. It wasn't good. Really? <laughs> it was mm. not good. Which, which I mean, hotel I, well, is this? Uh, I forget, but it was in Jerusalem. Mm. Um, oh, they, I think they accidentally booked us a really nice hotel. Mm. And they didn't realize it. It was like I think it was like five star, like one of the best hotels mm. in Jerusalem. They just hadn't realized. <laughs> so yeah, they had all these options. Kosher sushi. I, I had sushi. It was yeah, my, um, my nephew's wedding was delicious. Ko kosher sushi can be kosher, but it mm. it, it must fish in, in terms of being kosher. Yeah. Because obviously, yeah. uh, when you go to any place, you're not gonna get that's kosher. You're not going yeah. to have shrimp or you're not going to have lobster or you're no, not going to no, have no. certain things that don't have fins yeah so um the fish that they must have used probably flounder or whatever yeah but so, um, did you have st peter's fish they put it on the grill mm, no i don't think oh we they gotta take it to tiberius ah it's so good okay uh, while we're getting hungry at the moment, let's get back to the show. So did you, you put your good walking shoes out here, I presume? Oh, absolutely. We did Where a did you walk hiking. to? Um, they, um, they took you to the Western Wall? Yeah, we went to the Wall. Uh, we went there on Shabbat, and then we went there a few days later. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, it could be a little, little less busy. In. Mm -hmm. Did you end it up? Oh. And talk about religion for a minute. Um, to fill in. You saw a lot of people... Yeah. With that. Did you end up doing that? Or? Um, well, we were given the option to, uh, all the men in the group, and at first I didn't. But then as I was leaving the wall uh, the second time we were there, which was a few days after Shabbat, uh, there was somebody, uh, there, was a, there was a rabbi there, and he, he came up to me and he was like, ah, are you Jewish? And I was like, well, yeah, I am. And he was like, were you ever, uh, were you, were you, were you ever bar mitzvah? Did you ever have a bar mitzvah? Mm. And I actually didn't have a bar mitzvah when I turned, uh, when I turned 13. Uh, and I was like, and I said, uh, no, I didn't. And so he, he just like wrapped, he put that on me, uh, told me to repeat. Basically the, it's basically the Torah wrapped yeah. around. Yeah. But if you drop, drop the, the other cut. part, you have to fast. fast. Yeah. Mm. That whole, you know, yeah. you have to fast, I think, 24 hours or something. Like yeah. That. But, yeah, it, um, the first five books of the Torah is in that. And they painstakingly write it. It's not yeah. printed. It's written. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's um, there's a lot of um, <clears throat> strange customs that people are not used to being Jewish. I mean, um, you know food, the people, so on and so forth. But Israel, um, you know, if you can take that trip, um, you know, recommendation is go with a group like 
um, getting a free trip because it is very expensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm glad I went because it was free, and I, I don't think I would have went otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that if I were to go back again, which I would like to, I would definitely like to go without a big group just so I could like explore it on my own because it was very regulated. Mm-hmm. It was very boxed off, and, and a lot boxed of it, off meaning how uh, a lot of stuff was like censored or like they didn't they didn't bring us to certain places or they didn't let us talk to certain people. And it was all very within think the parameters. Is? I'm not sure. They, they, it's, it's. I mean, it's funded by like a majority of it is funded by the Israeli government that mm. pays for this. So it might be some. Mm. They, they, a lot of time, anything, uh, anything that might be. But they brought you to the good parts of Israel. They yeah. didn't bring you to <clears throat> the Palestinian. Piece. Not at all. So, no, or, no, yeah, no, or, no. There, there's a lot of security, like you yeah. had mentioned with the Bedouins, that uh, uh, you saw. The Israeli army there. Yeah. How was that experience? Did you end up speaking to some of them? Well, we had five soldiers stay with us for about half of the trip Mm. uh, from the Israeli army. I think that was the best experience because they had different political views and different outlooks on stuff relating to the army. And there were several times when they argued about, like, ethics of things and stuff relating to the army. And that was really interesting to see because we didn't really get to see that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. These are real people who were working in the army and doing stuff. And uh, and they had like th- you, mm-hmm. they had different thoughts about because you know the Israeli yeah. army now, I mean for non-combative uh, uh, maneuvers, mm-hmm. matter of fact, because um, the IDF uh, the IDF employs people with disabilities. Yeah, the actually I think we learned while we were there the Israeli yeah. government yeah. Uh, they'll find employment for uh, they'll they'll look at somebody's like skills. Even if they 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 have a disability or not, and they'll place them some in a uh, some of them work in a kibbutz. Yeah, we uh, we saw a play that was uh, a one woman play mm-hmm. with a woman who was blind and deaf in the lead mm-hmm. role, mm-hmm. Uh, and that was very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did, um, did they take you to see kibbutz? Yes. Which one? Um, not sure. Is there's so much we we packed like eight or nine things into every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. It's hard to remember exactly. Yeah, because uh, according to the Jerusalem Post, There's a lot of um, mm-hmm. according yeah, according to the Jerusalem Post, it says that disabled Israelis must also serve uh, in the IDF. Well, it mm-hmm. depends on what they can do. Yeah, if it, you yeah, if you wouldn't make a good, if you would if you can't walk very well or or something like that, they might not put you in a combat role. Why no. wouldn't want to go to combat? No. Now, now <laughs> is there anything you didn't like being there? Like, I don't know there's pros and cons to everything. But. Um, well, our tour guide was a little iffy. Uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, he, he just, ta- he, 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 uh, he, uh, oh, he, he, he talked about um, lots of things, but um, it seemed to be very one, uh, one single-minded, mm-hmm. one viewpoint, and... Uh, a lot of stuff was small or seemed like not very significant, uh, and we could have. I felt we could have d- been doing a lot more with mm-hmm. our time than spending uh, five hours in like less than like a one mile radius. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, did they take you to Mayor Shireen? Uh Yeah, we did. Oh yeah, I know that. I've mm-hmm. been there. Mm-hmm. Did you um? No. You know, a certain yeah. thing that does something. You weren't hand, allowed to. Yeah. Um, did you end up speaking to, drive, like, to any like relatives, the relatives while you were in Israel? Because um, I know it was hard not having a phone. I don't think we. Um, I managed to contact my mom once or twice. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have any relatives that live over there, as far as I know. No, but I'm saying uh, you being far away from home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we we contacted uh, my my mom once or twice, mm. uh, but other than that, not really. No. Yeah. So was that really hard being away from, like your mom being scared that you're away, that type of thing? Or? Um, I guess so. So I think my my mom didn't really realize uh, what Israel was. Uh, she was imagining like the Middle East, like the stereotypical, like in the movies, mm-hmm. like all the houses are made out of clay and it's all dusty. No, no. There's a lot of thieves, and no, it's like a very modernized country. Uh, and uh, and and I think she was more scared than she should have been. Did you uh, buy any souvenirs? Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. I got my mom 
uh, a menorah uh, that was made over there, and she asked for some olive oil from Israel. Oh, yeah, I love uh, They let me bring that back, and I brought yeah. her and her fiancé uh, some liquor mm-hmm. as well. I brought which, my younger sister. Uh, we went to a, uh, we went to a, um, a farm, like mm-hmm. a... Uh, that me a, a winery uh, mm. near a near. Oh yeah, you went to a shuk, which is a a market, right? You yeah, up going yeah. Yeah, the shuk. Uh, but we went to a very like a very apparently a very famous winery that won that's mm. won a bunch of awards. That was near a mm. that was near the Sea of David, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but you're but of course, pick, you're going to be showing us some pictures while yes. this runs. So, um, <clears throat> well, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Ableton on air. And, Absolutely. Um, if, when you make another trip, let us know. Sure. <laughs> um, for more information on, as a matter of fact, um, I'll pull up the number. I know it's. We'll go back there. Hold on one second. Right. It's gonna. We're gonna edit this. I have to stamp the passport, right? Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Hold on, I just want, there's a number here to, for Israel. Oh, oh there we go. Um, um, for more information on the uh, birthright trips to Israel, you can log on <clears throat> to, hold on one second. Just put birthright hold on, hold, I know, wait, hold on. Just put birthright Israel. I'm the looking hell? for the it's website. Right oh, there we go. For more information on the birthright trips to Israel, you can uh, log on to www.taglit, that's T-A-G-L-I-T dot com. Again, you can um, log on to www.taglit dot com, birthright Israel. Well, that puts an end to this edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.